don't look now, but today was the start of padded practices out at Panthers training camp. Ask any player. They'll tell you it doesn't really feel real until you start hearing that sound of when the pads collide. And that's what we heard at Panthers training camp in Charlotte today. The first preseason game of the NFL season, two days from now. That's also when August arrives. The Hall of Fame game, Thursday night in Canton. August is Thursday. Next week, the Panthers will have their first preseason game against the New England Patriots. It's all so close. For all the talk about the Carolina Panthers offense this offseason, Bryce Young, how's he going to bounce back? The changes that Dave Canales plans to make. Look at all these weapons that they've added. It seems everybody's forgetting about one key piece that was taken in the second round of last year's draft in Jonathan Mingo. Don't do that. Don't sleep on him yet. Don't write him off after just one year. It does seem he's been overshadowed which is fair when you suggest that they're, you know, add so many weapons at his position over the last few months. Like, it's fair to forget about what you had before when you bring in Deontay Johnson, trade for him for the Pittsburgh Steelers back in March, and you draft in the first round at his position, Xavier Legat out of South Carolina, that guy. But don't forget, Mingo was a second-round pick. And when you look at some of the highlights that the Panthers have been posting today, Look at some of the updates that some of the beat writers are putting out there in 11-on-11 11 11 periods. You see a lot of 15. A lot of Jonathan Mingo. Making catches. Taking steps. Making strides. Last year, a lot of the excitement pe- people are feeling for Xavier Leggett was being felt for Jonathan Mingo. They looked at him and they said, this guy likes to ride horses. I got a big boy. This guy's got a country accent. This guy was taken in the 30s with a draft pick. Yeah, that's what we need. This guy could be the next great Panthers receiver. But when you are not a first-round pick, it's easy for you to be viewed a lot like a new car that just rode off the lot. The value just completely dissipates, and nobody cares about you as much anymore. Your value just immediately goes down the moment it rides off the lot or a year removed of you being taken in the second round. But yes, like Xavier Leggett, Jonathan Mingo is still around. He is a country boy. And Mingo said today he is fluent in Leggett. Leggett Lees. Everybody always looked at me as a country guy on the team. So he came in. I didn't didn't bump the second place, but cool. Cause like I feel like the biggest thing Coach uh, Coach Moore can't understand them. So every time they get answered, Coach Moore just be looking at them and be confused, and we all just start laughing every time he answer a question. But he cool, you got you got good energy, so it's fun. Got to be around. You understand them? Oh yeah, every word. I got the big ball. Understand every word. John of the Mingo talking about Xavier Leggett. There's no question. Last year was awful for Mingo. Not going to try to defend it. No. Touchdown catches, just 43 receptions in 15 games. But after Adam Thielen, is there an offensive player that would say they had a good year last season? Maybe Chuba Hubbard because the expectations were so low and Miles Sanders played so poorly. But Iki Aquanu wouldn't feel that way. Pretty much anybody else on the offensive line wouldn't feel that way. None of the running backs, the other skill position guys. This entire offseason, you hear the argument being made. We've made it. For Bryce Young bouncing back. Last year is a write-off, considering how bad everything was around him. Play calling, catastrophe, wrestling of play calling duties between Frank Reich and Thomas Brown and the injuries on the O-line and no time to pass the ball and Bryce having such inexperience. He's a rookie, asking too much of him too soon. All those same things could be true for Jonathan Mingo. So if Jonathan Mingo, or pardon me, if Bryce Young isn't to be written off for all the reasons we just outlined, you shouldn't write off Mingo as well. And do you know who hasn't sold any of his Mingo stock? Steve Smith. On draft night last year, 89 said that Mingo reminded him a lot of himself. And here was Smitty on WFNZ in Charlotte this week when asked about Mingo. 
me and Jonathan put some work in this off season. Oh. So he he was getting some work in with me at, you know, seven o'clock in the morning outside at the end of the week after he was already working. We were doing a lot of work together. So this is not high on the guy. This is Steve Smith and John Domingo are, are joined at the hip that he calls me. I call him when I see something or he has a question. There's open line of communication, man. This Batman and Robin talking and trying to figure out how can we uh, corral Joker, which is the corners that he's be going against this year. So if you, if Steve Smith hasn't written off John Domingo, why on earth should any of us? If he believes in Mingo, maybe you should have a little belief too if you're a Panther fan. And just think, if he pans out, if he turns out to be even a decent wide receiver, you know what you got in Adam Thielen. You just drafted a first-round receiver in Xavier Legat. Deontay Johnson, to a degree, he's proven as well in the league. I won't go as far to say this is a scary wide receiver unit. This is not Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill streaking towards your uh, into your secondary for the Dolphins. It's not quite that, but it's not bad. Certainly a lot better than what we saw a year ago. So don't sleep on Jonathan Mingo.